Welcome to another episode of TLC, The Life Coach with Shegun Olugbemi. In our last episode, last week, we tried to, um, you know, build on what the foundations we've laid before. That is, you relate with God through your spirit, but your body, because of all the creation of God, of all the creature, uh, the creation of God, only man has dua you know, citizenship. Only man has that duality. In other words, man was created, his body was made from this earth, but his spirit came from God. According to the account we found in Genesis, the Bible says God made man in, you know, out of the ground. He made his body out of the earth. He dug the ground, he shaped his body, and then he breathed into him. He reached out to himself and implanted himself in man. So man became an interface between heaven and earth. His body came from the earth and his spirit comes from God. That is why it is only spiritual food that can nourish you when it comes to your relationship with God. That can nurture you. Only spiritual food. It's only the things of God, it's only the life of God, it's only the, 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 the word of God, it's only prayer and fellowship with God that can nurture your spirit. But when it comes to your body, eating the word of God, reading the word of God, studying the word of God, hearing preachings or fasting and prayer will not take care of the body. You need earthly food. You need the food that is growing here on earth, that is grown here on earth. You need rice and beans and some oranges or vegetables they, because your body comes from, came from this earth. And so because of that, your body succumbs to the rules of, you know, the rules of this earth that govern this earth. And it is your job to ensure that you live your life as you serving God, if you say you want to serve God or whatever it is, in your spirituality, I don't want to say religiosity, make sure that you do not violate the divine protocols, the divine laws that govern this place. And we said that these laws, uh, in order to be able to enjoy cre uh, creation, um, the previous episode, you can actually get them on my you YouTube channel, Shegun Lugwemi channel, and you will find these episodes there. And so you will see that to be able to enjoy creation, to be able to flow along with creation, you need to cooperate with these laws. Only those who know how to crack these codes are empowered to exercise dominion over them. God told Adam and Eve when he made them, he said, he said, and God blessed them and he said, be fruitful multiply, replenish, fill the earth, have dominion, and subdue the earth. In other words, to exercise dominion, you have to be in agreement, in sync, in alignment with the Creator. In fact, we're going to see later when we're seeing those laws, that one of the laws of nature is that you cannot rule over creation without submission to the creator it's a violation of divine law if i've given you right to act on my behalf if for any reason you fail to abide by that principle you evidently apparently you have excluded yourself from the authority that i gave you to act you are no longer you are no longer you know in position to act for me because there are rules you cannot, for instance, if you are a, a, a minister of the federal capital, I mean, a minister of, uh, of the federal uh, government of Nigeria, you cannot make policy statements unless you have submitted a memo to the National Executive Council and it's been debated and it's been agreed upon. Then it becomes the policy of the president of the federal republic and his government. Then you are then empowered to speak. And so, if you decide that your loyalty to that leader or to the system you represent is no longer, you know, uh, guaranteed, then you can no longer exercise dominion. Because it, you can only exercise dominion to the degree of your submission to the one that gives you authority to exercise that dominion. And so, you see that in order for us to 
exercise the unit to understand. I told you, you have to look for the law that governs that. You know, somebody asked me the other time, what are the laws? How do I know the laws? Well, look for the laws. I just gave some illustration, uh, some illustrations the last teaching. And then if you want to have a good marriage, one of the things you need to do is to leave and cleave. Is to leave and cleave. You need to leave. You need to, you cannot, you cannot report everything that goes on in your family to your parents and hope you're going to have a stable home. You cannot keep, you know, every little thing, you pack your things and the woman go back to yours. Or you are a mama's boy, your mother is dictating how your wife should work as you live in your house. You're not going to have that. You're not going to have a good marriage. So one of the laws of good marriage is living and cleaving. The other one is fidelity, loyalty, faithfulness, protection, support, love, goal harmonization, and all of that. These things are laws. And then what about the laws of making money? You need to work. You need to save. You need to invest. You need to render services or sell some goods. And then you need to give. You need to, you know, touch other lives. These are some of the laws of money. How about the laws of friendship? He says, he that has friend must show himself to be friendly. In other words, if your friend has called you, if you're important enough for your friend to call you twice, he is important enough for you to reciprocate. So there's the law of reciprocity in friendship. There is the law of loyalty and trust in friendship. There is the law of support and helping each other in friendship. So when you put these things together, you find the laws. How about the laws of, you know, and, and, and these laws of nature, they will work for you when you practice them. I know that we live in a system where bad people are rewarded, where psychophants will go lie against other people and they will be promoted. People are just newly recruited and they will be promoted above those who have labored. Or because of Godfatherism, they will take some of the junior officers in the military or police and put them above their officers. Or they go for juicy postings and all that nonsense. But you continue to do what is right. Because that man who is seated there and who is cheating you and who is, you know, you know, oppressing you and denying you your promotion, he will not be there forever. One of these days he will be out of that place. And to his shame, you will be the one to take up his seat. Continue to do the right thing. Don't allow people to change who you are. Don't allow people to subdue and kill the goodness in you. Don't allow people to make you violate the laws of nature that God has placed to govern us. And so we've seen that, that we, we need to learn how these principles work. And then we went on to also say uh, that this is the reason some people, uh, you know, make the most, you know, out of life while others barely get by. We all have equal capacity to reap the harvest of creation. But we only get to exercise that to the ability or to the degree we are in compliance with its fundamentals. I asked a question some time ago from some young people. I said, if the richest man in Nigeria today, who happens to be the richest man in, in, in Africa, if he gives the opportunity to have 20 million naira and the opportunity to stay with him, for six months, which will you go for? And most people, most people say, I, I need the 20 million naira. What am I going to do with the richest man in Africa? You know, they don't understand. They want to buy iPhone 13. They want to buy Pro Max 12. They want to buy car. That's, so that's all where their minds are going. They don't know that if you can stay with the richest man in Africa for three months, your life will never remain the same. Because you're going to learn how he works. You're going to learn his diligence. You're going to learn the way he organizes his life. And you're going to, you're going to be stained by his dedication to work. A friend of mine shared with me years ago when that same man was traveling from the UK. And both of them then, before the advent of uh, private jets. And both of them happened to be traveling from the UK and and then they were traveling and and all of a sudden this guy you know he, he said he was making effort he was doing you know he just wanted to sleep he wanted to sleep then this man was awake walk, walking on his laptop he said when he tried to sleep this man was still on, he, walking in his laptop on and on and on and on and on 
you know, and then all of a sudden he found out that the man was not really asleep. So he has to tell him, say, hey man, this is something I need to do. So he stood up also and carried his book, started writing, started doing some work and all that. But he learned that the man never slept until he got into flew into Lagos. The Bible says, a lazy man it will be a little sleep, a little slumber, and once we come like an armed man. This guy walks and walks and walks and is diligent. That as rich as he has been he, all these years, it doesn't stop him from doing his work. He supervises his projects. He is awake. He works. I remember a story that um, I had of how he tested his security man. And um, he says he wakes up in the night. I mean, he's, he's on 1, 2, 3 o'clock. He's calling Australia. He's calling China. He's calling everywhere. And, and he's, you know, and, and, and the security man is sleeping and just sleeping and sleeping. And two, three hours and then until he goes in. So he said to himself, I'm paying this man to come here and sleep. I thought I asked him to come and guard me. Well, let's try him. So one of the um, holidays, one of the festive period, he gave him, he called him and said, ah, you know, um, Baba, my God, come. Um, here he said, three million, go and do um, the festive period with your family. And then um, just, you know, take this and then go and enjoy the salad break with your family. Oh, okay, now go there, now go there, and then he left. So after about uh, a week, the man said every day he wakes up, he goes around, and the man was no longer sleeping. Every day he goes around, he's no longer sleeping. And then he's saying to him, man, what is going on with you? Every day I come here all these years, you have all this while, you've always been sleeping the night. In the last one week, you have not been sleeping. Is there any problem? Can I help you? This money you gave to me, couldn't they have anything now? That after you've given me this money, it's not allowing me. I can't sleep for this. Since I sincerely, I can't sleep. Yeah, yeah. What happened? He says, Since the day you gave me the money, I've been thinking of how to make my family and my life better. And I'm thinking of what to invest the money into so that I could be better than, than I was. And then the man said, well, maybe, you know, people who have less, they really have opportunity, they have rest of mind and they sleep a lot more. But the reason they don't have more is because they sleep too much. Because this guy was walking through day and night, he's spending time and resting when he needs to rest. But at the same time, he is investing time. Right now, I'm talking to you, recording this in a studio. Midnight, some of you are asleep. But I'm walking to speak to you. That's, that's what it is. If that's what it takes to put out your heart there, to do what you need to do, then you got to do that. You need to understand that the laws of nature, if you do not work, you should not eat. And that is why in this nation we encourage too much of laziness. Somebody told me, he said, I don't know what, uh, who did this to us in Nigeria. Why are we like this? Why are things this? Why is Nigeria? And I said, we're lazy. He said, no, sir, I don't believe so. I said, we're lazy. I said from our leaders to everybody, I said, an average person in this country is lazy. And when the president said it, the, 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 the youths were angry. And I said, can I define what I mean by that? He said, well, tell me that. I said, the Bible says, Proverbs says, I think Proverbs 17 says, a lazy man cannot roast that which he caught in hunting. In other words, a man had gone to to hunt all through the night and he was able to catch you know kill some game and then he brought it in but he could not roast it what does that mean it means if you cannot add value to what you already have you are a lazy man look at all the intelligent human beings we have in nigeria why is the brain drain affecting us mother any african nation we're lazy we can't add value to the people we already have. We have oil. How many years have we been flaring gas in this nation? If we are not lazy, why can't we add value? There are more than 32 products that are made out of petroleum. Why couldn't we add value? 
Now the former government, former former, I think the you know the the president of the government did I, uh, IPP or something in the independent power supply, uh, you know whatever in all of and they built all these things. Some of them were commissioned in the bush, and they made the so they, they put uh, the some of them brought all those equipment. Guess what? Nobody thought of where they were going to get the gas to power those things. Meanwhile, we've been flaring gas for years. And still flaring gas. So we're sick in the head. Something is wrong with us. We can't add value to what we have. On those states, almost everywhere you go, you have bitumen. And we cannot tie all our roads in this nation. We can't add value to what you have. We have uranium, uranium in, in Delta State. We have almost every state of this nation has one kind of mineral, two, three types of minerals or the other, and yet we can't add value to them. So once you are unable to add value to what you already have that have been bestowed on you by God, you are a lazy man. You know you can sing, but you can't add value to it. You know you can write, but you can't add value to it. People ask me, oh, you've written uh, so many books. How do you do that? I said, I write. In the day, I write. In the night, I write. They say, but where, where you travel? What? I said, I go with my laptop, I go with my iPad, and anywhere I am, I have my backpack. At the airport, I'm charging my iPad, I'm writing. And in the plane, I'm writing. When I'm in the bathroom, I'm writing. When I have to catch another, as soon as I catch my flight and I'm changing over, I'm writing. Just keep walking, just keep walking. As soon as I have any, I take my rest and I have any work, I'm writing. If I can't write, I, I say it out, I record it in audio. And Because then time does not wait for you. Just the other day we said Happy New Year and now we are about to cross another year. When are you going to wake up from your slumber and know that you know you don't have the whole life to life is not a dress rehearsal. You don't have the whole the whole life to prepare. You got to you know understand that you know life is is given to us and we need to be able to work on it. That's the way it is. And this is the reason like I said most people make uh, the best of life others are not ready to because they are not going to comply with the fundamentals of life. The authority to exercise dominion over creation is a voluntary activity that an individual chooses to exercise through the observance of the laws of nature. Refusing to use what you have does not in any way diminish its potency. What you do with what you have is your choice. It is not God's business. What you do with what you have is your choice. You need to wake up and know that life is not a dress rehearsal. What you do with your is your choice. If you choose, you see, God has given us authority to exercise dominion. Do you know that man has been able to tame lions? And they are keeping lions as pets. They're keeping tiger as pets. They're keeping crocodile as pets. Keeping snakes as pets. And we are able to tame wild animals. In fact, among the equestrian, um, uh, this thing, horse, horses were among the first of being to be domesticated was donkey, and then later, you know, uh, horses. And we still have wild horses that are not yet uh, that are not domesticated today, still in the wild. But man was able to exercise dominion by bringing them into submission, and they called something breaking a horse. That is making the horse submissive and breaking that wild nature to make it enjoyable so you can ride, to make it submissive so you can ride. And so God has given us authority to run over nature. But then, if you don't know how to do it, you are not going to be able to walk in consonance or in, in alignment with that law. And number five, since the creator has ceded a portion of his creativity and capability into them through these principles, he is unable to deliver the benefits to those who are in alignment with him, but are out of order with the principles of nature. Many years ago, a lady came to me. She's been married. And, and, and with a husband, they, you know, <laughs> they expected babies. And this lady would just not do the right thing. The, the man, you know, posted to Port Harcourt, and then the woman is in the north, and then every day, oh, please, daddy, I need you to pray, and then pray for me, and pray for us. I say, what prayer do you want? Eh, well, we don't have babies. It's six months, it's nine months, it's one year, no babies. I say, where is your husband? 
Oh, he's in um, South South. I know that. And you are here. You want me to pray? What prayer do you want? You want to put me in trouble? I said, okay, I'm going to tell you. I received the word from the Lord. God says, the Lord, go and meet your husband. You are going to get pregnant. Because there was supposed to be one virgin birth. It happened over 2,000 years ago. You are not that. You are not the second. You are not going to be the second. So I, I, I sent for the husband. Give me his telephone number. I called him. I said, take your leave and come back immediately. So he came back and I said to him, I sat them down, what's the matter with you? Well, he will have been busy. And then I said, enough of business. You are on three weeks leave. When, you know, and I taught them how to calculate his uh, safe period and taught them things. And I sat on this couple, I sat over them and I told them, this is what to do. This is when you are in your ovulation period, this is what to do, this is what to do. And I go to this doctor, take more advice. But now I gave them calendar, calculated, and I gave it to them. That month she got pregnant. Why are you asking pastor to pray when you won't meet with your husband? You are violating the laws of nature. A lot of people, and, and I was talking to another couple, and they, if I, even recently, and the couple was telling me, oh, oh, we are doing, and I found out that they did not even know the difference between safe period, uh, the, uh, the moment of fertility, and the periods when the woman should be going through. And then he said, oh, okay, uh, we know. And, I, and, and as and, and the counselor was going on, got some, you know, medical people. Okay, so when last was your, this, when last did you do this? And then they, they were, and then I found out that all along, the woman had been convincing the man that five days to the next cycle is when she is ready for a baby. How dumb can you get and still be alive? You're not doing the right thing. And you won't acquire the right information. And then you want God to come down. Everything you subject it to prayer. Everything is prayer. Everything is fasting. You won't even learn basics. If you don't know maths, go and look for a math teacher. If you don't know geography, look for a geography teacher. Number five. This is the path to abundance and stress-free life. In the book of Genesis, we see that as the book of beginning, the law of precedence, you will see that God began by teaching the people, by giving them a garden. And then as he gave them the garden, he began to show them and say, take the land, take care of this garden. And the land, the garden was a prototype. The other part of the world were not yet cultivated. But God gave them a prototype of what they could turn the world into if they did the right thing. Unfortunately, man did not do the right thing and we lost her. We couldn't reproduce the prototype that God gave to us. We have a golden key in our hands. And the golden key is understanding our world's you know, uh, provision, what God has given to us. You need to understand the principles, how things work. You know, um, not too long ago, I think about two years ago, somebody told me, oh, there is this meat, oh, there is this people, oh, you're going to give them, if you can give them 250000 or 300000 and then they're going to triple it in the next this, and they will triple it, and you will get this. And somebody said, oh, I borrowed money, and I put it in, and they've given that to me, and I said, congratulations. But I said, that in Nigeria... By the law of this nation, you should not, your markup is 30 to 35 percent. I said, how is this person able to do it? He's giving you 35 or 40 percent every month. I said, he's done it three months. Let's watch if he's going to do it in another six months. That's what we call Ponzi scheme. You collect from A, B, and C to pay D and E. And collect from D and E and F to pay A, B, C until one day they just disappear. Both the MMM, both the, what do you call them, all of these, uh, uh, what are these names, and all those, uh, and they, they, they all have collapsed, and people, some people were committing suicide because they wanted to, to, they were so greedy, they don't want to follow the law of growth. Growth is progressive. Growth is gradual. Growth is step by step. Growth is measurable. Grows, growth, even when there is a quantum leap, it's, it works with foundation. And there is a, 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 even when there's a geometrical progression, you are able to monitor it and you are able to analyze it. And these are the things God has given to us. And so you need to understand that life is not a dress rehearsal. You need to wake up. 
Your job is to dress and keep your garden. Life, if a person is promising, there's a simple rule to know how not to fall into the hands of scammers. If anything is too good to be true, then it is. The person is promising you 50%, promising you 60%, they're promising you all that. And these are the things we violate. In our next episode, next week, I am going to be talking, to, I'm going to begin the laws of nature as we see in the Garden of Eden. I've seen about 50 of those laws. I just hope that we have enough time for me to be able to teach those laws. And I will be talking about the laws of creativity. That's what I will begin with in our next episode. And I'll be talking about the laws of creativity. Until I see you same time, same channel next week, God bless you. Keep practicing kingdom principles and you will get kingdom result. God bless you.